Many life decisions are made because there is a feeling that by being in the right neighborhood, being in the right school, being in the right organization, association, club, business, community, that you will be around people who are right for you. These are people that you believe that if you can associate with, your life, your business, your career will be better. You might say that is getting into the right circles. And getting into the right circles is something that I can say emphatically will do much for you. In fact, I would say that getting into the right circles is essential for your career, for your business, to prosper and for you to really feel fulfilled and to really enjoy life and, and what you do. Well, I want to tackle this subject a bit in this video and explore what getting into the right circles means and how you can go about it and how it might benefit you by focusing on this objective. Let's talk a little bit about what the right circles means. Because it's something that, while it might seem obvious, it is not always obvious. I don't think anyone goes through life wanting to be in the wrong circles. Um, we want to be in environments where we are associating with people who think the right way. We want to have a network that is productive and fulfilling, that we enjoy being with, and we, we all share common goals. We want to be in a position where by being in among certain associations, we learn, we grow, we meet others, we expand our vision of what's possible for us, and we contribute to others, we help others in their success. This is, in summary, what I mean by being in the right circles. And sometimes, being in the right circles, or should I say, being in the wrong circles, is not obvious. Sometimes you enjoy being around certain people, or you enjoy being with people who are um, your peers, so to speak. They went through school with you, or they had a similar career path, or they're in the same neighborhood, or their family. Um, and you feel that this is your crew, so to speak. These are the people that you associate with, and these are the people that you enjoy being with. But what you may find is that the people you're around are limiting. And they're limiting not because they necessarily want to limit you. Sometimes that is a factor, but, but often it isn't that they want to limit you, but because of their world, worldview, because of their experience, because of their ambition, because of what they've seen in the world, um, because of what they aspire to, because of what they've read, digested, how they use their time, their habits, what they're willing to settle for, puts you in a position where if you associate with them too much, you will be limited by their scope. And it is necessary to expand your vision, expand your scope, expand, expand your uh, capabilities and understanding of what's possible for you. So if you're a person who is looking around and seeing that there are great things in the world that can be accomplished and there are great experiences that you want to be a part of and that you want to do more of some things that might be unusual or unpopular or unconventional or not shared by others, you must expand who you're connected with, who you're engaged with, um, and how often you're spending time with these individuals.
And it could be just as simple as realizing that there's more in the world, there's more in your industry, there's more in your business that's possible for you. And by understanding that you are not amongst people who share that feeling, who share those ambitions, that you have to make a change. Now let's talk about what a change can mean in your life. Well, first of all, a change can mean that you take an idea that you are accustomed to, a habit, a tradition, a practice, a way of living, and suddenly you meet someone and that is expanded. That person says, well, wait a minute, we can do this differently. Wait a minute, we can go there. Wait a minute, we can have this. Wait a minute, we can do this now. We don't have to wait until later. Wait a minute, I know how we can get through that door. Or, I know someone who can help us get through that door. That's the power of being in the right circles. The first is the, the expansion of your thinking. It changes the way you think. So if you're, you've been in an environment where some people think, this is not for me, or I can't do this, or I don't belong there, or I can't achieve this. Well, meeting someone who helps you cross that bridge can be tremendous for you in your life. And you might have some things that you unconsciously have accepted that are not for you. Some things that you have unconsciously believed are not for you. I experienced this quite a bit in my work coaching salespeople, managers, uh, even entrepreneurs in luxury. They are around beautiful things, around successful people. They are in magnificent environments, but it's for them. It isn't for me. They think that these things are for someone else. So when I challenge them to expand the way they operate, to expand the, the way they approach what they do, to not only think of themselves as selling or managing or whatever they do, but think of themselves as peers to those people that they sell to, that's a very difficult thing for them to do. So um, this is a big world. There's so much available to us. There's so much available out here. And you want to be in a position where nothing is off limits to you. Now I know because of education, income, race, um, there can be things that you believe are not available to you. If you weren't taught that explicitly, that might be implied, if not by the people that you're around, your circle, your friends, your family, but it might be implied by society you may pick up on this idea that certain things are not available to you. And I want to challenge you to consider that. What is it in your life that you might have ruled out for whatever reason? You've ruled out because you just think that this is not achievable. Uh, there are certain neighborhoods you can't live in, certain cars you can't drive, certain events you can't go to, certain places you can't travel to, certain people you can't talk to because you have placed limits on yourself. And one of the things that 
getting into the right circles will do for you is it will expand your belief in what's possible for you because it, it, it might just demonstrate for you rather quickly that you can walk through that door. I know I have always felt that the good that I saw around me was available to me. And I've never ruled out the possibility that these things are for me. And so when I got into the business world and the working world, my goal was to figure out how do I figure out how to get access to these environments? How do I get access to these people? How do I learn what is required? And this is an important point, learning what is required, because that's the next thing that we should talk about here in terms of making sure that you get into the right circles. In thinking about what is required, you might ask yourself, why would the people in the right circles want to associate with me? And the answer to that is, they might not. They might not. But your job is to give yourself every advantage you can, every bit of leverage you can, and education, all the things that will put you in a position where the people you want to associate with will be more inclined to associate with you. This is one of the disadvantages that many people will give to themselves. They will not prepare themselves to be attractive to the right people. Now, you might not like that idea but it's one of the realities. Anyone who is successful wants to associate with others, other successful people. Anyone who is accomplishing things and making things happen wants to be associated with people who do that. At the foundation level, someone that has an objective, whether they're achieving it or not, they want to be associated with someone who can help them achieve that objective and other objectives. So putting yourself in a position where you are attractive to the right people, where you um, understand what is required to be amongst the right people is so important. I see many people today um, not do that. You know, we have a very casual society, for example. So the view is, look, I don't have to dress up. A lot of successful people walk around in t-shirts and sneakers and they're very successful. That's true. Um, I, think, I think there's a difference between a billionaire who has built a company doing that and someone who is just getting started. And I would say that while I am not saying you have to wear a suit and tie everywhere, but I am saying to you, you want to be conscious of your presence, your appearance, your style, and all of those things. You want to be conscious of the way you communicate. You want to be conscious of the way you write. You want to be conscious of following up, being able to submit a proposal or an idea to someone, making things look professional, making things sound professional. Um, all of these things, these good old fashioned, good business habits, some people call them soft skills. I believe they're more than soft skills. I believe in, in many ways it's the whole skill because putting yourself in a position where you come across well to the right people is, is a big part of the challenge. Many have the mistake in not learning the, the thinking, the codes, 
the motivation of the people you're trying to attract. And the other thing is narrowing your focus so much on your peers that you can't, as they say in sports, play up. You can't, you can't talk to someone at another level, in another world, in another age group. I see that very often amongst people who are young. Their focus is on other people their age and not in connecting with older people and learning something from someone older and sticking with that. That step alone can advance you tremendously because you can have an older person who can, within a second, pick up the phone, introduce you to someone that you would never, ever meet. <laughs> it, it, you know, it'd be very hard for you to meet at the right level. And in some ways that, that has been one of the things that has happened for me in my career. You know, I've always been a person who has been curious about more experienced people, um, older people, you know, what is that person doing? How did they get there? What is their background? And that interest has resulted in me being invited to participate and being hired and being um, listened to because it was clear that I was able to communicate, think, and understood on the right level the ideas that were relevant to, to individuals who were older than me. So when you're thinking about why someone would want to associate with you, who's in the right circle, if you will, first think about how does the right circle think? What does the right circle want? What are their motivations? What do they need? What are they trying to achieve? So many people immediately launch into what they want. Immediately launch into what they're offering, what they're selling, without even asking a question on whether you are working with someone in that regard or whether you are know of this or care about this or anything like that. So when, when you're thinking about the right circle, one of the first things is to put yourself in that person's shoes. What are they thinking about? What motivates them? And what is it that they need? You must be significant to get the attention of someone significant. Even then, you might not get their attention. But you have to start by deciding that you will be significant. Now, significant can mean an understanding of your industry. It can, be, it can mean an understanding of aspects of the industry that someone else does not. It can mean skill, a skill set that others do not have. But being significant is one of the keys to getting into the right circles. And significant does not mean that you went to this school or you um, studied this. It really comes down to what can you get done? What can you get done? Because someone who is significant is trying to get things done. So when it comes to connecting with the right people, one of the key steps is improving your significance. Often I find someone who is pitching me on something or trying to get me involved in something, their pitch, their conversation, their overture will be too insignificant. And I'm always looking at this in terms of my overtures to others. 
because of some of the things I'm involved in, sales and marketing, and in some cases, luxury, there will be people who will look at that and they will say, that's insignificant to them. <laughs> so you have to understand that what's significant to you will not be significant to others. In addition to that, successful people often operate contrary to the masses. So even if it is significant, they, they might decide that, well, I don't know this person, so I'm not going to respond to them. Or I don't respond to people on LinkedIn or cold emails or cold calls or whatever. There could be any number of things that will make it a little bit more challenging. There are also stereotypes and assumptions about you because of the way you look, behave, where you come from. So remember the key is to put yourself in a position where you can be as significant as possible. And that will give you the best chances of breaking through when it comes to finding yourself in, in new meaningful circles. So what makes you significant? There are really three things. The first is you help others reach their objective. You have a way of helping them reach their objectives. The second is you have something great, some expertise, some capabilities, some knowledge, a style, a network, an approach, a product. You have something great. And it's great in the eyes of the person who is significant, not you. <laughs> it's great to them. And the third thing is you have a great attitude. You are willing, you are positive, you are potentially dynamic and productive and you follow through. Those three things will make you significant in the eyes of most people. Now, there are some mistakes that I see people make when it comes to getting into the right circles and staying in the right circles. And often these mistakes are because the person is just thinking too small. They don't realize what thinking bigger will do for them in their career. And because they're thinking small, there are missteps. <laughs> One of those missteps is not going out of your way to help someone. You know, I, my career began, at least in the media business, by going out of my way, helping someone because I was very interested in being in that side of the business. And I would help this person figure out how to achieve his objectives, even though I didn't work in that department. I would write things for him. I would research things. I would give him my thoughts. I would, I would support what he was doing. And by going out of the way, he recognized in me skills, attitude that he wanted on his team. So you have to be willing to go out of your way. It is about doing things at the convenience of the person that you're courting, not your convenience. So go out of your way when it comes to getting into circles. The next thing is understanding or showing that you buy in. You buy into someone's program, that you buy into their philosophy. You know, if they've got a book, buy it. If they've got a event, get a ticket to it. If there's something they're trying to accomplish and you can help in some way, um, help them in some way, show them that you buy into what they're doing. So many people will not do that. They just will not take a small step to demonstrate that, hey, I'm on your team. And whenever someone does that, sometimes I'm in a conversation with someone and they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm listening to this audio of yours, or I read this book, that changes my whole perspective of who they are and what kind of commitment they have. So buy in. Uh, it's one way, if you're trying to get into an organization, you're trying to connect with people, it's a wonderful way to make that happen. Um, 
The third thing is being unwilling to give, being unwilling to give of yourself, unwilling to give of your time, unwilling to, to, to actually give more than is expected. It doesn't have to be even, by the way. Uh, I'll never forget a guy contacted me after many years and he said to me that my company didn't do right by you and uh, I've got a check here for you. And he called, called up and uh, he said you could pick it up tomorrow. And this was years after what had transpired. I, I, I had given extra. And I gave extra because I was hoping to expand my relationship with this company and, and it didn't happen. But someone there was watching. And when that person had an opportunity to do something for me, they did. So be willing to give extra and do extra because often that will come back to you in surprising ways. So many people are just, you know, everything has got to be, you know, even. And the result of that is you alienate people who can ultimately do something for you down the road. Maybe they can't do it right now. Maybe for whatever reason, they, they, they're just, they're not focused on it right now. But don't be unwilling to invest so that more comes back to you. Another aspect is being blinded by what you see. So many people will see someone not see in them where that person is going or what they're doing or what they're working on and they'll be blinded by that and they'll be dismissive of someone and and as a result they'll make the, the last mistake is that they won't follow up and they won't follow through. Um, I can't tell you how many people I see squander relationships because they just simply won't respond. They won't follow through. They won't even say um, the most courteous thing, which is not right now. And I realize everyone's busy. It's sometimes hard to do. It's hard for me to do sometimes. But these are short-sighted mistakes that squander your ability to get into the right circles. You know, the rewards of all of this are so significant that I don't want you to underestimate it. And sometimes it's difficult, but being in the right circles means that someone can quickly make a phone call. Someone can introduce you. You can do something with the endorsement of others. I've had people say to me, you should do X, Y, Z, uh, a significant person. And the minute they say that, I then take that and go to others and say, this person suggested I do this. You're able to go through a door with the endorsement of others. You're able to do it with the support of others. And so that is just one of the things you can leverage. I'll, I'll never forget the story I heard about uh, Byron Allen, media, uh, I guess he's a billionaire, media billionaire, talking about how he was struggling to build his company and trying to get um, access to cable networks. And he had befriended uh, one of the King brothers of King World, so famous for syndicating Oprah, selling Oprah into, into markets. And he was invited to an event at uh, his brother's um, barbecue, and he didn't even have the money to get <laughs> to the person's mansion in New Jersey. He didn't have a car, and he didn't have a way to get there. He had to take two or three buses to get there. And when he finally arrived, the party was in full swing. And this gentleman was saying, well, Byron, where, where have you been? I was asking if you were here. And when he came in, this fellow grabbed him and said, I want everybody to meet Byron Allen. He's doing some great things. I want everyone here to take advantage of what he has to offer. And this fellow was so important to syndication, so important to cable, so important in the television market that that relationship, that friendship, 
enabled Byron Allen to cut through when he couldn't before. Um, by going out of his way, by doing something that was painful, by doing something that in some ways was embarrassing, um, he was able to move another rung up the ladder in building his media empire. I've shared a lot in this video about getting into the right circles. And your question might be, okay, I understand what not to do, I understand the benefits, I understand the, the um, ways in which people will prevent themselves from getting there. What should I do? Um, let me give you a formula that I think will work for you. The first thing is decide that you will get into the right circles. Make that an intention. Many people don't make that an intention. So they don't build relationships, court people, uh, join organizations. They don't, they don't, they're not intentional about it. And the first thing I want you to do is to get intentional about it because once you make it a goal, you will see opportunities. The second thing is go to meetings, go to events, go to organizations, go to galas and gatherings and seminars and workshops and cultural events and places you would not normally go so that you can meet people. And a funny thing will happen. You will meet people and one person will lead you to another. I can remember when I first started my career, I would intentionally go to places and meet people and, and someone would say, well, you need, to, you need to meet my friend Brian. And Brian would say, you need to meet my friend Sheila. And before you knew it, I would develop this network because I was willing to go out, meet people and connect with others. So go out and meet people. The third thing is resurrect existing relationships. There are people that you've already met, people that you already know who could be helpful to you. You are just not in contact with them. You're not using those relationships effectively. And by the way, if you want to learn how to do any of this stuff on a deeper level, write me. I have all kinds of programs available. Info at AndreTaylor.com. I'll share with you um, what I have available. Certainly tell me about your situation and your goals and we'll see if there's a way we can help you uh, with some of the resources that I have available. The next thing you want to do is propose. Um, you should always have lots of proposals uh, working for you out there in the marketplace. Propose things. Why don't we do an event together? Why don't we write something together? Why don't we do a project together? Why don't we um, do a podcast together? Why don't we, you always think, what can you propose with others? And one of the best things to propose is doing something for a person in a different circle. Don't think so much about what it is that you want to achieve. Think about what they want to achieve and how you can use your capabilities, your resources, whatever it is you do to help that person achieve what they want. And finally, don't get put off by rejection. Rejection is one of the realities of being in business. You will be rejected repeatedly throughout your life. You'll be rejected by people who even want what you want, what you have to offer. Don't be put off by it. Remember that it just goes with the territory. So number one, decide that you will do it. Number two, um, go out and meet, get yourself into the right circles. Number three, resurrect relationships. Make sure those re relationships are alive and thriving. Number four, um, propose. And number five, don't be put off by rejection. Now take a look at this video.